and welcome to the Global Diet of Meditation call for Sunday, June 14th, 2020, 3 p.m. Eastern. The power of our belief is unlimited. There's two ways to believe. One is maybe, and one is for sure. Maybe comes through the ego mind, which means that it's interrupted quite a bit. The other one comes through the heart mind, which means it is not interrupted. It is pure confidence through the heart mind. So you believe, and it, it will happen as long as you don't have any expectations or attachments to it. It's, it's a clean send of frequency. It isn't a uh, maybe, uh, kinda, but it is deliberate, succinct, exact. Now imagine that if each one of us were in that space, what we could and will do on this planet. Have you ever tried to, for yourself, you know, just kind of fooling around, I wonder what would happen in the event that I were to honestly believe without interruption. What I'm talking about interruption is, is that you believe something, but you have interruptions because you didn't have doubt. And, uh, you know, maybe some fear, you know, fear of the belief that, you know, you believe and it will be. Then we have a fear. And the fear comes in, again, as a thought through the ego mind. And it's just a thought, but we embrace it, turn it into a reality, create it to reality. So, you know, we have this... Um, belief and it's tainted or it's pure. It's like someone asks you something and you, they ask you, well, do you believe what I'm telling you? Well, you have two avenues. You either sit there to yourself and say, well, maybe, maybe I'm believing what they're telling me. Or you pretty much say, well, yeah, I believe what they're telling me. And then there's the other one, you say, well, I don't believe anything they're saying. And now understand that it is you, nobody else, but you who determines your level of belief. No one else. You, you know, people can kind of t try to talk you into it. Or, you know, kind of, oh manipulate into believing something, but it, all in all, it is your choice, however it is. It's your choice, your belief mechanism. How, how far are you going to believe? Do you believe in yourself? You know, you ever ask yourself, you know, do I honestly believe in myself? Do I believe in my abilities? Do I believe the life I'm creating for myself? Or is it just something that I'm just guessing at, maybe, and so on and so forth? Because when you engage in believing, you're creating. And the belief creates. And the belief is a positive high frequency. So that's how so many of us get tricked with the, the facade that's it's in front of us. We get tricked by it. So, you know, it's almost, it's like a really good movie, you almost think that that's real. So you believe it's real. Or a fake false flag or something like that. You know, it's so convincing that you believe it's real, so it is real. So it's always in a, uh, it's always in motion uh, our, our belief energy. 
And it depends on how we view and how we extend it. It's like if someone came to you and said, do you believe that you will be, and this is a, this is a good one, do you believe that you will be wealthy behind, beyond your wildest imagination? Now what comes in when someone asks you that? There's things that will come in. Oh, that's, that's being greedy or... Oh no! I, you know, I'm asking for this and that. Oh no! I, uh, maybe it's too much to, to to be saying. You know, all these doubts come in instead of saying, "Yes, I do believe that." Well, that, well you'd, you'd have no no interruption, no question, and, and no if. Yes, I do believe that. Now, another thing that hits us is that the. the the external effect that others have on us where we, you know, you really believe that? Oh, I don't know. That's, uh, yeah. I sure as heck don't. I, I don't know where you're coming from that you actually believe that. So you see, we're all different from our perspectives. It's how we view, uh, how we exist, uh, how we know ourselves. You know, we know ourselves, it's all connected. And belief is just one of the connections. It's like uh, uh, someone says, do you believe we'll get there in time? Well, you don't have an expectation. You don't have an attachment. All you say is, yeah, I believe we'll get there in time. Well, what if we don't? Then we don't. <laughs> See, it's, it, 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 it's, it's like um, all of these things come in uh, to kind of, they, they do, their frequencies affect our frequency uh, from our direction of what we're believing in. You know? It's like someone, you, 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 someone asks you, do you honestly believe that you're going to, you know, you're going to have a home here and, you know, it's going to be everything you desire? You don't have expectations. That's what you go, yeah, I believe that. Absolutely. To see when you believe, but you don't have expectations or attachments, you just believe. Say, you don't have a deadline. You don't have a time frame. You just believe. And you let it go. And you ever met, come across people that are like that? It is well, aren't you, you know, yeah, okay, so you believe, but what about all this other stuff? So what? We'll get there. It'll happen. Now, I mean, if you flip the coin and you have, you know, where you've got people that are in the, the uh, direction of constantly negating their belief. So they believe, but then they negate the belief. Okay. Or they get into a downward spiral where they're negating just about everything that they uh, make a statement and say, well, do you think we'll get there? Probably not. <laughs> yeah. Well, you think we can lift this? Nah, I don't think so. Well, let's give it a try. Nah, I'm not going to give it a try and there's no way we can lift it. You see the difference, the frequencies? We And, and it's always being directed by us, you know, from us or others uh, directing it. And it becomes quite a, a menagerie of uh, actions and attitudes. Now, if you have an action, you're going to have an attitude about the action. Aren't you? If you, if you take action, you're going to have an attitude with the action you're taking. Now, if it depends on the action, it depends on the attitude on how effective the action will be. So, if you take action at something, but it's like half-ass, what do you think the outcome's going to be? Oh, well... I know it calls for four screws, but I'm going to put one in, and that should do. That should, that'll fix it. Okay. 
So it's all about our perspective of ourselves, but a lot of us don't, we aren't looking at ourselves. We're just delivering without thinking. So when we deliver these things, they just come out and whatever. And when you begin to really, really realize that if you look at the outer conditions of a person's life, will always be found to reflect their inner beliefs. The outer conditions of a person's life will always be found to reflect their inner beliefs. That's James Allen. The outer conditions of a person's life will always be found to reflect their inner beliefs. And we know this, that all the actions that we take in our life are based upon choices that we make, which are inherently based on our belief systems. I could say that's true. Couldn't you say all the actions you take in your life are based upon choices you make, which are inherently based on your belief systems? If you have a deep belief that it is silly to practice smiling all day long, then you won't be able to make the conscious choice to make your mouth form even the most subtle grin. We live our entire lives as if our unique ingrained set of beliefs are completely true, giving our beliefs even more power and building up even more evidence to support the validity of these beliefs. We build it. See, we're then caught in a crazy, vicious circle that is like a belief merry-go-round that is constantly spinning in the same cycle and often undesirable direction. Every experience that each of us have then reinforces our belief system until finally our mind completely buys into the illusion that our beliefs are real. And the, the truth is there is nothing real about any beliefs. A lot of people don't know that, probably would contest it. There is nothing real about any of our beliefs. Now, they are all fabrications of the mind. And the only thing that is real is that which doesn't change or die. Okay? The only thing that is real is that which doesn't change or die. So, beliefs have the power to create, the power to destroy or the power to create. Now, many humanoids or, or human beings have the awesome ability to take any experience of their lives and create a meaning that disempowers them or one that can literally save their lives. Either way, uh, Tony Robbins, either way, okay? Beliefs have the power to create and the power to destroy. Human beings have the awesome ability to take any experience of their lives and create a, media, a meaning that, it, that disempowers them or one that can literally save their life. Now, beliefs are the steering wheel that directs our manifesting vehicle down specific roads of reality. 
you, you can experience only as much joy, success, and abundance as your belief system will allow you. Take a moment right now to close your eyes and ask yourself, what do I most want to believe is true to manifest the life I deserve to have? Perhaps it's something like, uh, I, I can have a career that I deeply love that, and that takes care of me financially and I'm becoming a money magnet, what, you know, however you want to. Or you may want a better relationship by saying, my ideal mate is very attracted to me and desires me deeply. Now, the loving universe is supporting me and creating my ideal relationship now. And simply take a few minutes to write down whatever this new empowering belief is that you would like to create into reality. In any project, now this is this could be debatable. In any project, the important factor is your belief. Without belief, there can be no successful outcome. William James. Without belief, there can be no successful outcome. Now, if you, let's say you, you choose no, no expectations and no attachments, okay? And you just go with the flow. But do you have a belief with going with the flow? Do you believe a certain way with that perspective? That you have no expectations and you have no attachments? But you do believe that everything is just going to be absolutely fine. Whatever may come your way. So there's always a belief. That we create our own beliefs. And the beliefs that support the reality we desire. That's pretty much it. It, 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 if you do, if you believe that you can create into reality the life that you desire, then you will. Okay. Now the only thing that can waylay that is your susceptibility to others' influences, where they come in and eventually you erode into now questioning everything that you believed in to begin with for yourself. So you can create into reality unstoppable joy, success in your life. But here's, here's the question. Are you ready for that? A lot of people aren't. Are you ready to create unstoppable joy and success in your life? So you, you ask yourself that. So you look at your outer, your outer conditions of your life. Look at your outer conditions of your life. Now, you're not judging. You're just looking, viewing. Your outer conditions of your life. The external, external, external the externality. And, I, and know that will always be found to reflect your inner beliefs. The outer conditions of your life will always be found to reflect your inner beliefs. So what does that mean? Well, you look at your surroundings outside of you now, outside of you. How you live, what's around you, how, what you surround yourself with, uh, everything. Okay? This gives you a pretty good critique or understanding of your inner beliefs. And a lot of people wouldn't look at it that way. Okay. 
but it's true. What you project externally is what you are within. Okay? So then people say, well, what if someone's just very hateful? Then they're very hateful within. What if someone's very confrontational and very aggressive? Then they're very confrontational and aggressive within. Well, what if something like, uh, let's just look at this one. Um, you, you go over uh, to someone's place and you notice that it's absolutely an absolute disaster. Okay? So it's the first time you've been over to their place. Yeah, hey, I said, why don't you come on over? So okay, fine. You go over there and you go, are you going to be kidding me? Look at this place. That's a reflection of, okay, their inner beliefs on how they feel about themselves. So when they look around and they see all this disarray, you look around, you see all that disarray, that's the disarray within them. The clutter, the, a lot of things within them. Now, do they know that now? I don't think not much of the time they don't, but that's the reality of it. So whatever our outer conditions are, we will always be, they will always be found to reflect our inner beliefs. So if you project measure, measurability, you, 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 you project uh, sadness and negativity, and everything, that is a, it's the inner reflection of your inner beliefs. So it pretty much goes hand in hand. Uh, if you didn't have a belief in something, nothing would happen. If you didn't have a belief in something, nothing would happen. That's period. I don't believe that's ever going to happen. Now, some people will say that because they think by doing that 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 will happen. And the, and the chances of that happening are about one in a million. It does happen one in a million, maybe once in a while. But when they say when they say I, there's no way that that's ever going to happen, then it never happens. And then they feel good about it because they say, well, "See, I said there was no way that would ever happen, and it never happened." So it's, we don't realize a lot of times that what we project, we create. We just go around, you know, we, we just kind of maneuver these lives, and, but we don't, we don't step back and take a look and say, you know, my belief has been my driving force in my life. Is we, we can say this to ourselves. My belief has been my driving force in my life. If I hadn't believed in this, then I wouldn't have been able to do this. If I wasn't able, if I didn't believe in this, then I wouldn't have ever been here now, right now. So it's important that we choose carefully and that we understand that if, if, if our external projections, our external uh, happenings reflect our inner happenings, then we know we have some things that we have to tidy up if our externality is messed up or in disarray or you know, where we're projecting anger and fear and guilt and greed and manipulation and deception, then we know our inner world needs a lot of adjusting. Now, when you're happy, here's a prime example. When you're genuinely happy, and it doesn't have to be a, a, something big for you to be happy. You just, have you ever just been happy? Just for no reason, where you're just happy. Okay? That's a reflection of you internally. That's what that is. And you ever had people, you ever hear this one? What are you so happy about? Everything looks just like crap, and you're happy? It's like people get irritated if you're not down in the sewer with them. It's amazing. So you, 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 you're just happy. And that's, this civilization is literally, we're moving in a direction where that will happen frequently. We're, we're, we're not dragging. We're not skinning our knees. Uh, you know, we're, we're not disheveled, worried, stressed, fearful. We're the opposite. 
it is the power of our belief that drives us. If you can get the majority of a population of a planet to believe a certain thing, it's going to be created. It's just an automatic, okay? So, think about this. If you can get, uh, you know, millions of people, right, believing in something out of fear, I mean, to the point where they're very fearful, guess what? They're going to create it. There's no ifs, ands, buts about it. It's going to be like that. So, for instance, you could create a virus and done correctly, even if the virus really doesn't exist, you could create it through belief. And it, it, if the people of the planet believe, it will be. Okay? So, it's, it's a very powerful force amongst the population of the planet. So, you, you begin to realize that, okay, I look at this, do I engage it? So, I have, so I'm forced to believe? No, you could, you can just say, I'm not going to engage in that. I have no interest in it. I'm going to engage in things that I enjoy. Okay. I'm, I'm going to engage in things that I enjoy. I'm going to create through my belief, and there's nothing that's impossible for me to create. When I believe it from my heart mind, it will be created. So, and it's very true. Believing is seeing. Seeing is not believing. Believing is seeing. Seeing is not believing. Because the illusion of seeing oftentimes tricks us into believing that it's real. So we create it into a reality. And 99% of the time, what we see is not real. So this meditation, simply put, believe. So if you will, go to the place where you're not going to be interrupted, and I'm sure we all are. And the first thing that we want to do is relax our bodies. If your body is stressed and tensioned, you, there's no way you're going to be able to do any form of meditation at all. So you release all of the tension, the stress, frustration, whatever it may be that you've attracted over the last 24 hours. Just let it go. So drop right off again. You don't need it. It doesn't serve you any greater good. So you let it go and you drop your shoulders and you, and you know that your body is relaxing. You know that your body relaxes. You can feel it. So you talk with your body. How are we doing? All right? Are we relaxed enough? Do we feel good? And when you relax, you, you're not interested in moving. You really aren't. You're just there. You're just in a place of peace and relaxation. You just, you, you have no interest in engaging anything, doing anything. It's not being lazy, it's just being in total relaxation. So you let that body of yours relax, let all the things that may have attracted fall off. And as you do that, you then move into the now to relax yourself even more. See, the now negates the ego mind. It negates the subconscious mind. All that noise and chatter that we get, okay, it goes away. It's dissipated. To counteract, this is what happens. When we have the noise, the chatter, and you, you, you hear about these um, uh, sound machines that, that they, they play like... Um, uh, different, like forests and trees and rivers and waterfalls and you know, animals and birds and everything. And then you have pink noise and white noise and everything. This, uh, the, these frequencies help you to relax and to dissipate the noise of the mind and all of these incessant thoughts that keep zooming by. So in the 
now, that's exactly what the now does. Because guess what? It doesn't matter. Whatever you're doing in the now, you're focused on. Whatever it may be. That's all you're focused on. You are not focused on anything else. Your attention, your direction is on the now. The moment to moment that you exist in. The space between heartbeats. The now. The moment to moment. And when you do this also, you, you, as you still the mind, you still the ego mind. What a great thing. You, so you don't have that chatter. It's subdued. And it also, we get to a point where you start to understand, is it, why, why would I go in the past? What? Because past dangerous, guys. It's dangerous. It, it's seductive, yes. For all of us, none of us are exempt from it. But it does entice us because every time that we reminisce and go over something, we do it through the heart mind, so its intent is huge. So we embrace that, and unfortunately, many people will take that past and they'll bring it into a future that doesn't exist, and then they'll create the future from the past and relive that future in that, relive that past in that future. And I've heard a lot of people say to me that, you know, sometimes it feels like their whole life they've been running in circles. But then it makes sense that we're in the now, and in the now is the only time we create our future. So we're consciously aware that we're creating our future in the now. We have made rest and peace with the past because it's gone. It's over. And we're concentrating on the now, now moment, so that we continue to experience new things, gain new experiences as we go along. As we do that, they become the past. You can see how it works. We're constantly moving forward. So we're not looking over our shoulder. We're not grabbing something way back there and throwing it in front of us because we've already gained the experience and knowledge that we, that we require from the past, and that's it. Period. So in the now is our power. The now is the power. And in the now, we create our futures. Now, also... We want to breathe. We want to breath in through our noses, nice and easy breath in. And we want to breath out through our mouth. And picture, visualize this. As you breath in, you're breathing in divine positive energy. It's a pure frequency, it's wonderful. It's very powerful. So you breath that in and visualize it. You, you, you bring it in nice and easy up through the center of your body, up into the back of your head. Okay. And you start by visualizing. You, you bring it through the root chakra, which is the red wheel of light. It is the I am chakra. And then you continue and you bring it up through the orange chakra, the sacral chakra the orange wheel of light. I feel. And then you continue to move it. You can feel it moving, the muscles moving it. And you go to the solar plexus chakra, the I do, which is the yellow wheel of light. And then you go to the heart chakra. This is the I love. This is the green chakra, the green wheel of light. And then you go to the throat chakra, the Vishuddha, the I talk. This is the blue wheel of light. And then you go to the third eye chakra, I see, which is the violet wheel of light. And then finally the crown chakra, which is the I understand, which is the purple wheel of light. And you bring that divine positive energy all the way up through those chakras, all the way up into the back of the head, and you briefly hold it, very briefly, I am light, I am love, I am. And as you briefly hold it, you compress it and condense it into pure liquid frequency, free, pure liquid energy. And then you release it over the pineal gland. Now, our pineal gland is not fully functional. It, it's about the size of a prune, a little bit bigger. And uh, I look at 
as a rosebud. Just we release this pure liquid frequency over it, it begins to come alive, expand. It's like a rose would bloom, except the rose wood doesn't doesn't wither and die, it stays immortal. So we do this visualization with our breath. And we saturate the pineal gland. The pineal gland continues to intensify and expand. And it is our gateway to all the particles of existence. It's also our gateway to pure consciousness and our gateway to beyond. It's very important for us that it's fully functioning and healthy. Now, we also, as we breath out each time, we're met with the ego mind. The ego mind's there and it's constantly trying to get our attention. And it's constantly, you know, flailing around, going in every direction that's possible, and literally creating everything it can for us to follow. Incessantly, without uh, satisfaction, it always cannot be satisfied. So you can see why a lot of us are tranced into a, a life of never enough, or not enough, or not having, but must have. So this is all external. It's all in the external world. Now, we just say that ego mind is that, you know, ego mind, um, you're not in charge, you're I am, so please take a seat. Now, we're consciously aware, all of us are consciously aware that we are of the highest, deepest eternal love from the highest, deepest eternal love and the highest, deepest eternal gratitude. Our frequency is high in these meditations. And we're looking forward to the fact that we progressively get where it's high all the time. Now, we have others that have been with us for a very long time. We have the archangels, the cherubims here from the archetypes. Now, they are consciously aware that they are the highest, deepest eternal love from the highest, deepest eternal love and the highest, deepest eternal gratitude. There's trillions of them. They vibrate at a different frequency than we do, and that's why we don't see them like we see each other. They can come and go. They do appear in humanoid form to give us a message. It's great. And tens of thousands can surround any one of us at any one time. The reason is, is because they can have a small amount of space and large number because of their frequency. They help us and we help them. We're all interactive. There's no such thing as non-interactive amongst all the species and civilizations that house pure consciousness. So they're with us, and we have the Ascended Masters. Kuan Yin, Maitreya, Buddha, Lakshmi, Ganesh, Gaia, St. Germain, Sananda, Jesus, Amoria, Abundantia, Pell, Thoth, many, many, many more. And they're consciously aware that they are the highest, deepest eternal love from the highest, deepest eternal love and the highest and deepest eternal gratitude. And they are those who have ascended out of body and hold God form, which is pure consciousness. And we are pure God form, pure consciousness that has moved into these bodies to experience these bodies, to experience physical, uh, uh, three dimensional uh, existence. We're learning, they're learning, everybody's learning, everybody's perfecting, everybody's experiencing. Different ways, shapes, and forms, but we're all experiencing. We're all learning endlessly. So, the three groups of us are gathered and we're at the equator of this planet Earth, Gaia, Arya, in this now, in this meditation, this forming a circle of light. 
And we call out to as many as we can to join us. And we call out to all light energy beings and all that there is, ever has been, ever will be, ever beyond and forever. And only those who are consciously aware that they are of the highest, deepest, eternal love from the highest, deepest, eternal love and the highest and deepest, eternal gratitude can join us in this now, in this meditation, in this forming of this circle of life, this gathering, immense. And if, if, we, if none of us were of the high, highest of, of the deep eternal love and gratitude, we wouldn't have the frequency to engage in this meditation together. It would not be high enough. And all of these light energy beings, they, they come in the Google Plexus, and one Google Plex fills this universe, and they come in a trillion from every direction. And those that do come are the high, are, of the, are consciously aware that they are the highest, deepest, eternal love, the highest, deepest, eternal love, the highest, deepest, eternal gratitude. This is a gathering of an immense amount, massive all concentrating on this spectacular meditation. So we call upon all the inhabitants of inner earth, hollow earth, beneath earth, above earth. Many, many, many civilizations and species. And only those who are, are, are consciously aware that they are of the highest, deepest eternal love from the highest, deepest eternal love and the highest and deepest eternal gratitude and join us in this now, in this meditation, this forming of the circle of life. Now they come into billions. So then we call out to all the galactics, off-worlders. And there are many, many, many civilizations and species. We're only familiar with a fraction of them. Just in this sector of, of, of the uh, Milky Galaxy, in this area of the solar system, over a thousand of them traverse through the solar system every single day. So you have the Pleiadians, Syrians, Arcturians, Andromedans, you have the Feline, you have the Golden Pyramid, you have the Avions, you have Zeta Reticuli. You also have different forms of the Greys and the Dracos. massive civilizations and species. And only those who are consciously aware that they are the highest, deepest, eternal love from the highest, deepest, eternal love and the highest and deepest, eternal gratitude can be with us in this now, in this meditation, in this gathering, the forming of the circle of light. Now, they've been assisting us for a very long time in our evolution, in our enlightenment, in our ascension. And freeing ourselves from our own self-imposed bondage and our own self-imposed slavery. They assist us all the time. We assist each other. We're all part of each other. How can you not assist? Then we call upon All of our loved ones, all of those who have ascended out of body in this lifetime and all lifetimes that we've inhabited. Only those who are consciously aware that they are of the highest, deepest, eternal love, from the highest, deepest, eternal love, and the highest, of deepest, eternal gratitude, can join us in this now, in this meditation, in this forming of the circle of light. Now, they're consciously aware, they must be consciously aware, that they are the highest, deepest, eternal love and the highest, deepest, eternal love and the highest, deepest, eternal gratitude. And they come in the billions. And then we call upon all the light energy beings who have decided 
to be housed in the following forms on and above and below this planet Earth, Gaia, Arya, in this now, in this meditation, this circle of light. Now, there's literally trillions of them, and they come in shapes, colors, sizes, forms, configurations, of which many we've never seen before. And only those who are of the highest, deepest, eternal love, from the highest, deepest, eternal love, and the highest, and deepest, eternal gratitude can join us in this gathering, in this meditation, in this now, in this circle of light. Just to name a few of them, there's fairies, the sprites, the elves, the dwarves, the gnomes, the trolls, the trees, the elementals, earth, air, water, fire, ether, the mermaid, the dolphin, the whale, the pegasus, the unicorn, the centaur, and the minotaur. And they are with us in the trillions. All of us, all together, all of our gods together, all of our pure consciousness as one, form the circle of light. We're all in full compassion, non-judgment, non-ego, non-negativity, stillness of mind, gentleness, kindness, generosity, humbleness, bliss, joy, peace, tranquility, and benevolence. And we all are the one, and we all are the God, and we all are the love. And our god light energy is in all that there is, ever has been, ever will be, ever beyond and forever. It continues to intensify and it continues to expand. You know, all of us, as, this, as we have formed this circle of light, which is so bright and so radiant, it would take a billion of the suns in the solar system to be close to its radiance, its light. Now, we, we begin to ascend up and immediately are met with a gossamer field of trillions of reflective lights. It's like a complete glittering field of trillions of colors. And we immediately are met with the emerald green flaming healing light of Archangel Raphael. This is a column that reminds us that we are the power of healing. We're also met with the purple, violet, blue flaming light of Archangel Michael. This is the column that reminds us of our power, of our strength, and of our resolve. We're also met with the white fire. This column reminds us that we have a armor, a white fire armor. This armor is laid upon our surface because of our highest, the highest high frequencies of deep eternal love and gratitude. We maintain that frequency, therefore the armor is impenetrable. There isn't one lower dark matter frequency in anywhere of any kind whatsoever that can even come near us without being vaporized. You cannot bring a very low frequency into a very high frequency and have the very low frequency survive. It will vaporize. It is not molecular structure to be able to withstand that high frequency. But only we can choose to lower our vibrational frequencies. And if we do choose to lower them low enough to allow them to come in, such as the lower dark matter frequencies or the lower survival matter frequencies, they will come in. We then we're met with the purple transmuting flame, which this column reminds us that if we do do that, we can bring in the purple transmuting flame and we can literally transmute all of those lower frequencies into neutralized substance, send them back to pure consciousness where they are no more. We are also met with the violet ray. This column reminds us that we can bring the violet ray in right behind the purple transmuting flame and we can literally up the vibrational frequency where these low frequencies were and restabilize our white fire armor and move us back full into deep eternal love and gratitude. Now we're also met with the golden white pink light. This column 
reminds us of who and what we are. We are deep eternal love, and we are deep eternal gratitude. And this, this light reminds us always on this planet of what we are. When we see a sunset, the reason we were so taken back by it is because it reflects us. It reflects the love that we are, the gratitude that we are. This is why we're in such awe of the beauty of this planet, because it reflects us, all of us. So the golden light, pink light, is everywhere. It's in the sunsets. It's in the sunrises. It's always in the sky on this planet, somewhere on this planet. Now, we continue to ascend. Some of us who are carrying human form, we step outside our bodies and we float it effort, effortlessly above our bodies. And as we continue to do so, we look and we see this massive column that we created. It is larger than this solar system. And we designed it where it's opaque and it has trillions of reflective prism colors, like a trillion rainbows glittering and reflecting. And then we go to the top of it, we designed it so that the golden ocean can cascade down 360 degrees upon everything, saturating, flooding, and bathing. Everything with deep eternal love and gratitude. And this column, the, the golden ocean, we are each a drop of the golden ocean and we each hold the essence of that golden ocean, which is pure deep eternal love and gratitude, which is all that we are, which is our pure consciousness. And we move a little bit over and setting center circle is our meditation sphere. Now, we created this sphere well over two years ago. And it sets center circle. It houses all of our meditations in perpetual motion. Well over 800 meditations in perpetual motion. That's why the sphere intensifies every single day, expands every single day endlessly so none of our meditations literally live within the highest of the deepest eternal love from the highest and deepest eternal love and the highest of deepest eternal gratitude they don't dissipate they intensify and that's why this fear can be seen heard and felt and all that there is ever has been ever will be ever beyond and forever and that's why it does continue to intensify and it continues to expand. So this sphere can be seen, heard, and felt, and all that there is, ever has, been, ever will be, ever beyond, and forever. And it literally floods all of us 24-7. It floods our physical body, our etheric body. It floods our God. It floods our pure consciousness. It is everywhere. There is no way possible that you could even have a low frequency with this sphere flooding you 24-7 as you visualize it 24-7. Then we look upon this planet, this, this aria, this earth, and all of our brothers and sisters in all life, the highest value in the universes, and we choose to believe. We choose to believe that this is a paradise, that this is a garden of bliss. That it is a God planet of pure consciousness, deep eternal love and gratitude. It is complete joy, nirvana, it's happiness, it's ease, and it's everywhere. And we carry the essence of this planet's ability to transform into a paradise, God planet. We're all pure conscious gods. I, how can a planet not be a god planet when you have close to nine billion gods on it? 
so we believe. And as we believe, we believe that we are the God, that we are the pure consciousness, that we are the one, that we are the love. And it, so it is, so it shall be. And everyone, everyone on this planet, in it, above it, and below it, is also transforming into a higher frequency of deep eternal love and gratitude. And the rest of it, lower frequencies, they cannot sustain themselves. They vaporize and fall away. We continue to move up through our choice, through our own decision, and through our deep eternal love and gratitude. And we all begin to reflect the God within us externally. And we believe. We believe in ourselves in this entire direction. Therefore, we bring it into total reality. And eventually, all those on this planet will believe in a higher existence, a higher frequency, where we are seamless and where we know we are one. And we will believe that we will continue to create more and more of this awareness. I'll join you in meditation. I'll return to close this out. <laughs> 